Before COVID-19, we used to worry whether our kids would make friends at school and learn new things. Now, we worry whether they'll be safe and how they will adapt to so many changes. No matter what your concerns are, CalHOPE can help with free emotional support resources. Call the American Indian Red Line today at 833-368-4090. Anything you missed from today's Big Breakfast is in the Catch-Up Podcast on the Listener app, thanks to Chemist Warehouse. Pick up a fragrance for a loved one this Christmas from Chemist Warehouse, the real house of fragrance. Weekdays from 5.30. Marto and Margo, well done. Fun show, but gee, is a uh, little controversy there towards the end, Marto, with... Um, Bringing back Rumorphile. Yeah, Rumorphile, yeah, I wasn't yeah. expecting that. Well, the rumour's been around, as far as I know, for quite some time about Palaszczuk and everything mm. else, and uh, a lot of people are saying, what about the other rumour? I don't know what they're talking about. No. No, no idea. I, I... So check out the podcast if you want to hear about the rumour. I know nothing. In just a moment. Uh, the other thing that happened in the show... We're changing the world in so many ways, aren't we? We are absolutely changing the world one step at a time, Marto. Uh, we are combining our two loves for food and cars, it's bringing it together, the community of Brisbane. All you need is a brewery in the boot and we can oh, just have idea. a... idea. So what we're talking about, if you haven't heard about it, listen to the podcast, but all you have to do is wrap food in our foil, stick it Matt in the Preston's engine. Matt Preston's on board. Yep. He thinks it's a great idea. Well, that's what gave us the uh, gave us the notion to keep going with it, is if Matt Preston gives it the tick, it's on. You know who else gave it the tick? Uh, uh, Chaos, because they're on board too, Marto. They think it's a great idea and they've given us $1,000 to play with. No, they gave us 1000 I didn't tell them what I was going to do what with it. was it. for. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yep. Cooking in your car, you'll hear all about it. Welcome to the Big Breakfast Catch-Up Podcast. This is Triple M. Marto, you know we are car lovers here at Triple M. Yep. Uh, and there was some terribly sad and tragic news on the news last night. Recovered at Kingswood, out of control, driverless and on a destructive collision course. The classic car rolling down a Mudrabar street, through a fence and into a home, leaving its Jeez. owner bemoaning, not the Kingswood. Oh, the head turners, no. the Kingswood. We own four of them. I wrote one off of one... Dad had one brown one I ran into a parked car. Right this one off. was brown. It looked yeah. original. It looked like it had the original owner. It was in mint they condition. They were ahead of their time at the time. <laughs> I'm sure they're not now. Uh, this is the actuality of the crash. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy how do we get that audio? It was a guy filming. They had, a C- they had CCTV, CCTV. Oh. CCTV with audio. Of, on the house, obviously, uh, with audio. Hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, let me guess. I can remember Dad's. <laughs> the, the, did the handbrake fail and it went all down a hill? Yeah, the handbrake did, did fail. The handbrake did fail, Marto. They someone mentioned that perhaps it had a Toyota handbrake in it, and ma- oh. ma- maybe they weren't so good. Toyota handbrakes are wicked, are yeah. hopeless. Yeah, but how do you react if? A car comes crashing into your front front fence. Is it like this? Woke up to uh, something crashing into our house. It sounded like the entire house shook. <laughs> She's relatively calm, wasn't she? Yeah, she had yeah. uh, she had said that uh, there was a mess now out the front and out the back because they're in oh, the midst of, of renovating. Could you imagine if they just rendered and painted the front fence? Did it make it through the wall, or did it hit the wall and bounce? Well, the off? front fence was like it's a heavy. white picket fence, so it was yeah, timber. It so it crashed straight through that into. Yeah. The brick, the low set and brick that house. It? Yeah, it stopped it. Because they're bloody heavy. They were made of proper steel, Kingswood. Yeah, and you did ask what happened because it was driverless, Marto. It's believed the handbrake failed. The Holden Classic stopped by this wall. Luckily, no one was injured. Mm, no one was injured, just the yeah. wall and I think a, a bruised oh, ego right. perhaps of the owner of the Kingswood. Mm. And it would be remiss of us if we didn't acknowledge it with this. You're not taking the Kingswood anywhere. Take a bus. Take a train. <laughs> <laughs> Te- Teddy Ball <laughs> bit. I've never yeah. watched Kingswood Country before. You've got to watch it's it. It's going to be a great Isn't show. Isn't the castle before the castle was the castle? Oh, it was the wrong castle, I think you'd call it. It, what a day it's going to be. If you've got Ted Bull Pitt on your show before six, it's going to be a ripper. Oh, Triple M. The Big Breakfast. Rumour file. God, I remember when we used to do this every day and then I remember how much trouble it got us into and then there were people going to sue us and we don't. This is a new concept to me, Marto, because oh, Rumour file hasn't been around since you, I've joined oh, you on the show. I, well, even before my time, Rumour file used to tune into Triple M every day. Oh, and often they wouldn't say the name, etc. But uh, I've... 
I've thought about this and uh, I was at a wedding the other night and heard this story and people said, oh, haven't you heard this one before about Anastasia Palaszczuk? I went, no, where do I live, under a rock or something? Are you ready? Our Premier, this is a rumour only, so mm. I can't... It's a rumour file. It's a rumour file, exactly. I can't verify that this is true or anything, but... Uh, and there was a nodding of the head when this person at this wedding the other night was telling me there was a nodding head with, I'm, I'm thinking I'm the only person that hasn't heard this rumour around mm. town. Okay. Anastasia Palaszczuk is apparently going to finish up as Premier and hand the Premiership, the head of Queensland, to Stephen Miles, otherwise oh, known wow. by me as the robot. Right. And I went, what? What is this all about? Why? What's happened? Well, she is going to take on the role of CEO, the boss of the Brisbane Olympics. And then I went, that makes sense because that's a job that can go on for 11 years or yeah. maybe longer or whatever. Oh. So she's got long-term term tenure, takes her parliamentary pension or superannuation, whatever, and she gets paid that, gets paid that, and her job because otherwise she's got to go to the next election and go to the voters and they'll go, oh, I don't know, you did a good, bad job or whatever. She takes that out of the equation and has a job for the next uh, dozen years. What did she just recently appoint herself as? Oh, the Queen of Queensland or something, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, for the, for um, the Olympics. Isn't oh, she the like the boss head of, of something yeah. or other? But but that doesn't pay them. they will be the this will be a paid position, and then oh. she'll always be in our consciousness, and that's the rumor. So well she's done. stepping down as premier to become the CEO of the Olympic Committee. Heard it here first. Oh. If it comes through, breakfast rumor fire. Thank you. Um, I thought you were going to address another rumor. Mm. No. Like what? Triple M's Big Breakfast. Weekday mornings from 5.30. We've got a little boat. Uh, uh, it's, I don't even know what you would call it. What is it? Maybe 12 foot? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not good with feet. But it's a little... It's Four a little, and a half metre speed boat. Fiber, it's like 1970 glass. something. It's quite cute, your like boat. A, yeah. And Corey did a bit of work on yeah, it. Yeah, Corey did a bit of work on it. My dad gave it to us, actually. That's right. He bought it off a friend and he said, you always buy a boat from someone that you know because you know that it's been looked after and all of those sorts of things. So anyway, so his friend was moving. He was had the boat for sale. So dad thought it'd be a great idea to get it. And when we come down to the Broadwater and visit because they live on the Gold Coast, yeah. it'd be good to take the kids out. In and put around in, and somehow we managed to to pinch it and claim it, and it now sits very proudly in our shed. Mm. And Corey's done a little bit of uh, electrical work to it, and the, put some marine carpet and in it, repainted it, repainted it. Too. I like it. Uh, but the one thing that we didn't change was the name of the boat because Good. we have had some bad luck previously, wherein. We bought another boat a few years back uh-huh. and uh, we maybe used it three or four times and we had nothing but absolute trouble with it. Things I don't broke know on story. it. Yeah. Uh, we went out on it one night and we literally dragged the whole night. I was up Googling how far do you drop the anchor down. It says you've got to drop it, you know, three times further than you need yeah. to so that it can pull and drag and all of those sorts then of things. Then you've got to watch the swing. The light broke on it another time and then the depth gauge broke on it another time. Then there was another time when I was like nine months pregnant. Was, I was at one o'clock in the morning because it was dragging. Oh, yeah. I was pushing off a Mustang in Bums Bay at the spit there because there was this big, beautiful boat and we kept moving. Yeah. And I was pushing off this boat whilst heavily pregnant not to hit it because, you know, that's never going to end well. Uh, and then you lay in it because it had oh. a little half cabin in the front. Tink. Tink, 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 what? back and forth, What's... side to side, the water, the noise of yeah. the boat. Uh, it made me nauseous. I had to keep looking out this little porthole to make sure that we hadn't moved. It just was a nightmare. And I feel like the I've nightmare never heard about this boat came before. because we changed the name of the boat. I oh. can't even remember what the name of it was, but I'd heard that it was bad luck. And me not being a oh, boating right. type yeah, person went, it. surely that's not a thing. Let's right. change it. Historically, I've just looked it up. Historically, it's been been considered bad luck to change the name of a boat. I've yes. thought, heard about this. And so we did this for our first boat we bought and we sold it very quickly because it gave yeah. us nothing but trouble. No, hold on, listen to this. However, if you absolutely must change the name of a boat, a purging and renaming ceremony, ceremony. must be completed before the Tell name me. is revealed. Tell this me is you what did that. someone said with... to me and I was like, <laughs> if only I had have known. Remember Clive Palmer, that big bloody blue boat he's got at the moment, he changed it to his mother's name from whatever it was. He said, oh, I want to name it after your mother, Mary Jean. I've seen it going 
going around. It hasn't sunk yet, but it's a matter of time. Well, I hope he did whatever that ceremony is that you just said because he's going to have nothing but trouble with it. It's bad luck. And so that's why we've kept the name of our uh, little enough. boat. It's called Bobbin. It's not a great name. That's okay. Just bobbin around in the ocean there. Oh, One triple three five three. I yeah. want to know. All you blokes out there are boaties, what? are boat owners. What do you want to know? Have you ever had a, the, the situation where you've changed the name of the boat and it's brought nothing but bad luck? Or is this something that you've heard of? This Has this happened to somebody? And should I have done a naming or, ceremony? What is it? A re, what did or, you call it? A, re, a purging. Purging. And, or, and the renaming, renaming ceremony. ceremony. Is um, this even a thing? Do you this. know you own it? You've had boats? Uh, you no, boat? I've, no, I've, you only had, I've only ever had jet skis. Only jet skis? Yeah, jet skis. But the thing is, you know, when they launch a new boat and they smash the bottle of champagne mm. against it and when they name it, have you seen that? Maybe is I that did what that you wrong too. Do? Well, I didn't want to waste a good bottle of champagne. No, of I drank not. it. <laughs> You've, you've knocked a few over, though, <laughs> in your time. The reason we brought this up, because that beautiful old cruise liner, the... The Ruby Princess, oh, about oh, to no. set sail from San Francisco to Mexico, while our $5 billion industry remains anchored. So if there's one boat that should change sure. its name... Exactly. It's should the, have been Ruby the old Princess. Rule. Sailing from San Francisco <laughs> to Mexico, if you're keen to get on board. But we kept... The, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, we kept the, the name of our current boat because we'd had such bad luck with the first one, and I'd heard that it was mm. a bit of a thing, but I didn't know it was actually like a real thing, like... You're just mentioning purging and We're renaming. Saying, yeah, you're supposed to have a renaming ceremony. I, I don't know what that looks like. Should Maybe somebody's done it. Smash the bottle of champagne instead of drinking oh, it. Uh, listen to this, Ian from Strathpine on the burner phone. When I was young, Dad bought a boat which was this horrible burnt orange. That's color. what ours was. It was, it was too. It was burnt speedboat. orange and cream. He named it Agent Orange, which certainly turned some heads <laughs> at the local <laughs> boat brand. <laughs> yes, it would have. Uh, Stuart from Vicky Point. Hello. G'day, guys. How are you going? Yeah, Hello, good. Uh, boat name changing. Is this a thing? Have you heard of the bad luck that comes with it? It is. There's a lot of different things associated with boating and bad luck and whatever. But the, a mate of mine bought a boat, did the same thing, changed the name. We weren't aware of it at the time. And like you, every time he went out, it broke down or something yeah. broke or something went wrong. The other thing that uh, is, is a big no-no too is if you're going to go out fishing, you can't take bananas on the boat. Now, I mentioned what? this to them during the song. I said, bananas. What is this? Is this? Now, I once, I've heard the story once. Is it because snakes and spiders get in with, with crates of bananas and then used to bite everyone on board the boat? Is, have you heard that bit? What? No, no. What it's from, uh, from what I've heard, it's, it's from the early 1700s and the explorers and whatever. They would call into all these Pacific islands and different things and pick up big hands of bananas, put them down in the hull of the ship, they would go off and send all the rest of the food off that they'd been carrying with them. Well, that's what they say, Stuart. If you've got bananas in your fruit bowl, it, oh. it like, pre-ripens all of your other fruit. So if you want to oh, ripen up some avocados, every- put it in with, well. yeah, rottens everything. So always keep your bananas separate. I- I've been on people's boats and they said, have you got any banana?" They'll ask you. Have you got any bananas Seriously? on you? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a thing. Mm. Glenn. Right. Someone else might be able to ring 13353 and tell us. Yeah, Glenn from Petrie. Hello. Good morning, Margo. How are you? Yeah, I'm really well, Glenn. Um, can you... Um... Have you changed the name of a boat, Glenn? Yes, mate. Yes, I changed it from uh, Agronaut to Piss and Petrol. <laughs> Okay. Um, and was it a I good thing or a why. bad thing, Glenn? <laughs> no, I had a bit of bad luck, but I called it piss and petrol because that's all we spent our money on was petrol oh. and alcohol. So we just... <laughs> what, what sort of boat was it, Glenny? An old ski boat, V8 ski boat. There wasn't any skiing done, was there? Oh, mate, early in the day there was. Yeah. We could stay up there, but we got a bit wobbly later on. <laughs> Glenn, uh, we need a easy. home for some brick lane draft from Dan Murphy's. You yeah. up for it? Yeah, why not, yeah, mate? Yeah, why not? Why not? Right. petrol? <laughs> <laughs> free Friday. Free Feel Friday. My dad did warn me, though, when we looked to purchase the first boat. He said the only good boat is somebody else's. Find a friend with exactly. a boat. Exactly. Rich people need friends. Before COVID-19, we used to worry whether our kids would make friends at school and learn new things. Now, we worry whether they'll be safe and how they will adapt to so many changes. No matter what your concerns are, CalHOPE can help with free emotional support resources. Call the American Indian Red Line today at 833-368-4090. Wake up with the Big Breakfast, weekday mornings from 5.30. 24.5 Triple M.
want to talk about how Queensland opened, reopened yesterday. Huge news, this one, don't you reckon? The border pass system went live at 5pm yesterday. Health Minister Yvette Dath said eligible people were able to start booking their flights to Queensland immediately. Yeah, stuck Queenslanders down oh. in the land of the south can come home finally, Marto. Yeah, she said we look forward to welcoming so many Queenslanders back to Queensland from this week. I thought that's why we got uh, double vaccinated. What, mine's five months ago. I don't seem to, I don't seem to have had any benefits from it. All these other Queenslanders are double vaxxed and, oh, you can come back. Oh, really? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, liege. Um, now, listen, there's a fair bit to this, though. Is it's mean? not just, you can't just come on. You, if you're a Queenslander, you would think, you know, I live at that address. Is that right? Well, you can come home. Oh, there's plenty Strict to rules. it. Uh, it goes for about 18 minutes, but I'm going to try <laughs> to get you through it as quickly as possible. If you want to come into Queensland, you can apply for a border pass online. To do that, you need proof you have been double vaxxed for at least 14 days and have evidence of a negative COVID test within 72 hours of your flight. You must arrive by air into any Queensland airport. Your quarantine residence must be no more than two hours from that airport. You can stay in a townhouse, apartment or a freestanding home so long as you have the fresh air access to the front door, meaning you don't need to use any communal areas like stairs, lifts or a lobby. You cannot catch a taxi, Uber or public transport to get home. You can have someone drop your car at the airport so long as you don't have any physical contact with that person and if you do get a lift from someone, they must quarantine with you. Wow. Jesus, I don't know whether I do want to go back to Queensland now. <laughs> think about this. Triple M's Big Breakfast. Weekday mornings from 5.30. Mardo, the conspiracy theorists would have you believe that the Big Brother is watching us and that Big Pharma are tracking us through our vaccines and 5G, but turns out they actually are tracking us. Secret surveillance designed to catch criminals. Everybody has a face that we can see. We've been able to provide the names of offenders to um, investigators, which has uh, resulted in convictions. That's the lead facial image examiner from the Australian Federal Police. They're using face detection. What, what cameras are they using? Uh, all, every camera. Street cameras. All the cameras that are in, in and around all of them? Our, our city is... There's cameras everywhere. There's cameras everywhere, Marto, and they're constantly watching us. And through facial recognition, which we would be familiar with on our phones, if you want to find a photo of Marto on my phone, you just Google Marto, and it has all of the photos of you and I together collated in an album. We use it on uh, Instagram and Facebook to tag people in our photos. It makes suggestions on your behalf. I thought it was only China that did these things. Well, I think China are big big on data collection, uh, but we're using it here for reasons in catching criminals and the AFP are using it to identify people. So everywhere we go in the city where there's a camera, are they latching onto that and analysing us? I believe, I'm believe i led to believe so. I'm not oh, 100% yeah. sure around all of the details, oh. uh, but there's always two sides uh, to every story and there is another one to this one too. But facial recognition comes with controversy. Human rights advocates oh. questioning its ethics around privacy. It's just considered a very toxic technology. The hazards are just uh, too great. And I'm no expert uh, in when it comes to tech. I know how to post to my social media. So I thought we would get our tech expert on this guy. Oh, Trevor Long from everything for the man, EFTM.com. Good morning. Morning. Facial recognition technology. Talk to me about it. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What are they using it for? I think it's a great thing. I mean, you think about it, right? If you're in public, then the police are looking for you. Um, Then people who you walk past are able to give information to the police and say, oh, we saw that guy. Um, And it might help them find you. And it's probably going to take some time because you needed to find them and tell them and all this stuff. All this does is speed it up. It just speeds up the process of finding bad people. Um, And a lot of of privacy advocates and that kind of thing hate hate the term I'm about to use. But you know what? If you ain't done nothing wrong... There's nothing to be worried about. So they're not they're not databasing your every movement. Um, they're just looking for people who've done wrong. Um, and it's possible that they're using a lot of the cameras out there. Unlikely they're using all of them, but a lot of them. They uh-huh. are using. So they're, they're not using all of them, but they're using enough. Now, uh, are they selling that data to uh, all these harvesting companies? Like, so they can, I'm walking down the street and I haven't done anything wrong, but they've sold me because I've stopped at this shop or I've done that. Are they selling that data to anyone? I think that's the one thing we can safely say is not happening, if, especially if they're government-run cameras, because, you know, the governments, Australian governments are bordered by some of the best privacy laws in the world, um, we have great restrictions on what can and can't be done, used, sold, warrants that are required and all that kind of stuff. Private companies, um, you know, while they are subject to the same laws, uh, you know, do you trust them with regards to hacking and security and stuff? There's a much bigger risk there. So we're actually in a good place in Australia that 
um, you know, we have those protections. So again, there's a there's a level of safety we should have from that. Yeah, Trevor, um, obviously the uh, gentleman called it out as toxic uh, technology. Uh, should we be concerned? Does this not then open us up to a whole other field of data collation? I mean, yes, you, you've got to be aware. Um, so I'll give an example in the, in the non-law enforcement world of facial recognition, shopping centres. Um, you walk into a shopping centre and there's a lot of billboards, a lot of digital billboards often. They, in, if they're not doing it now, they will do it in the near future. They will show a different ad to you and me because I'm male, you're female. They'll show a different ad to me and Marley because we're different demographics. They'll, they, they will show different ads to different people mm. because they can look at you and they may not know who you are, but they can certainly profile you based on what you look like. So that level of facial recognition may freak the heck out of a lot of people. And I think, to be honest, that's where we need signs that say, you know, we've got signs that say there's cameras in use. We probably need a new level of sign that says we've, we're analysing your face or something like that so that we know for um, private companies using that technology, we, we should probably be made aware of it. What about China? I remember even before COVID, so that's more than two years ago, they were using this facial recognition for everything. Mm. They, were, they were tracking their whole population at all times to make sure they could regulate them. Have you heard about that style of things and could we ever go down that track or our government's a little bit too more attuned to the privacy? And our governments are restricted by the privacy laws we Good have one. in that they won't really get to the Chinese level. And don't, don't get me wrong, China's, China's at the top end of this. They have the technology and they have the ability to just do whatever the heck they want. But if you think you're walking around China unseen, uh-uh, it's not happening. They know where you are and what you're doing. So, yeah, we don't want to get to that point for sure. But I don't think anyone here wouldn't want uh, the federal police of all people, because they're looking at the, the worst of crimes, to be able to tap into any camera possible and see whether the person they're looking for was there. So stay away from cameras if you're sus. That's the <laughs> bottom line. Yeah, don't wear a balaclava. That's even more sus. Yes, I just hope there's sure no is. mistaken identity cases where you perhaps maybe look like somebody else. It's not me. Trevor Long, thank you so very much. Everything for the man, EFTM.com. Pleasure. The Big Breakfast, weekdays when you wake up on 104.5 Brisbane's Triple M. Well, it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas, Margot. Oh. The secret Santa lists are going out and everyone's going, what'll I buy Auntie Sonia? Get her a book. Why wouldn't you? Has anyone written one lately? Yeah, they certainly have. Matt Preston, World of Flavour book. Good morning. Good morning, Margot. Good morning, Margot. So, yes, look, it, it's a bit busy out there for books. You've got to... You got to do something during lockdown. Everyone got scribbling, um, so you got to do something to, to stand out from the crowd if you want to want people to buy your book. You got to offer more than just really, really tasty recipes. I think. Is there something about alternative cooking methods? Because Margot and I were having a chat last week, and I was telling her about cooking on the engine of your car while you're having a drive yeah, on yeah, the yeah. exhaust manifold. Yeah. Can, can I just give you yeah. two of our callers' alternative cooking methods? Please. By the time you get to Warwick, the old Bicky tin on top of the intake manifold. Thank you. And we would have scones. Fish in a dishwasher. Double wrap it in alfoil. Put all your sauce in there. Get one cycle through the dishwasher. Happy days. <laughs> I mean, throw out your steam ovens. Yeah. If you were ever going to steam oil anything, oil. who never thought of the dishwasher, dishwasher. Matt Preston? Well, look, look the dishwasher, I've, 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 I have actually cooked <laughs> salmon in, on the on the engine block of a car. So you it, have. It, it wasn't as good as cooking it in the oven. No. But, but that idea, I, mean, I think the, the, the scones in a, tin, in a biscuit tin on a manifold, that kind of taking camp up and cooking and, and turning the heat sources is very waste sensitive. I mean, I, there is actually, and there is actually a great example of that in the book. So you normally, you know, you know those little Greek um, phyllo pastries called spanakopita? Yeah, so yeah. I think them in big trays for individual. You know, they're delicious. Yeah. They're a bit of a plaza to make. I worked out a way we can make spanakopitas in your jackal maker or your toasty maker. Instead of making a toasted cheese sandwich, you can make spanakopita. It takes about three to five minutes and, it, they, and they, they have all the joy of one of the, one of the trickier kind of um, hand rolled ones. When Scobo gets up and says we, we we don't even know we haven't even got the technology that's going to get us to net net zero yet, I don't think he's heard of some of these methods. Go for a drive, do the cooking, <laughs> same thing. And it all started, mate, with um, somebody saying the way to heat pizza up is to turn your toaster on the side and slide it on in. On the side, yes, <laughs> it does kill your toaster though. That is the problem. If it doesn't kill your toaster, it'll, it'll kill your electric. So that's another. I mean, if our Triple M listeners have just tuned in, Matt Preston, they'd be like, why the bloody hell are we listening to Matt Preston and why are we talking about food Mm. on Triple M? Mm. Because it seems that not only are you uh, a very successful author and obviously uh, more famously known for your stint on MasterChef, you were actually in a punk band. Is that right, Matt? I was, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I was was in a punk rock band. I spent some time as a DJ. I 
Uh, I promoted a lot of concerts back, back back when I was working in the UK, so did shows by people like, um, who, who would be a good example, Nirvana's first London show, the wonderful guy called Dave McLean, um, Nina Simone's big comeback show. So, yeah, look, I'm, I, 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 oh, look, to be brutal, music is my first love, as John Miles once famously said. If I'm going to read the blurb which you are, because you, your publicists go, here, here's some information about Matt Preston. We, oh, know, yeah. you, we know you well anyway. But it says yeah, here, yeah. when Matt Preston's wife first met him, she thought he was gay. How did you come back from that? Well, well, you, you know what? She, she met on she met on my my pommy mates, and she went, "Okay, no, it's just an English thing." It wasn't the cravat that was, gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the cravat is a sign not not of not 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 of that, but it's normally seen as a sign of being a, a bit of a cad, a bit of a, a bit of a bad boy. Masculinity. Famous cravat wearers, they, they tend to be people like you know Dracula um, <laughs> or, or or the or the or the bad guy invariably one of those Wall Street. Um, Wall Street comedies, the, the evil villain is there who wears cravat. So, mm. yeah, Real look, men wear I, cravats, I, I, Matt Preston. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> I, I know I do, and I, I think I feel like I'm real enough. <laughs> you sound like you're auditioning for a movie part, Matt Preston. We love your work and we love your book. Matt Preston's A World of Flavour. Get it for Aunty Sonia or your mum, anyone. It's All the book, book for stories. Christmas. Right, thanks a lot, Marto. Love you too, you, Margo. Triple M's Big Breakfast with Marto and Margo. We can talk about it all we like, and this is the second time in the one week that we've talked about cooking food in your car. Underneath the bonnet on the exhaust manifold, you can cook food. And we've heard from people. Sammy from uh, Thornside, was that a name? Yeah, she the scones, cooked the scones. Driving in from Warwick. And we heard from other people who said, yeah, I've put a roast in there. There's all sorts of things. Well, it all started because you said you heated up the pizza by turning the toaster on the side and slid it in. And it was like, how else have you cooked? Alternative methods of cooking. cooking. Mm. And then we came to car engines and we're going to combine. Actually, we've been busy during the song. You hear that? (laughs) Cooking in a car. Sizzling a sanger. No, what was it? A snag. Snag. Anyway, cooking a steak. That's what we're looking to do, cooking in a car. And, Margo, we've got a few things cooked up. Yeah, we certainly do, Mardo. We're going to make a little bit of a competition out of this. And on Thursday, we are going to set the challenge uh, for whoever rings 13353 and wants to be a part of it. You've got to cook something on your car, in your car, like the scones or the steamed fish or whatever it is, yeah. and we've got $1,000 up for grabs. Now, listen, we only need, I don't know, three, three, four, whatever, but I think we've got, Chaos have said, listen, here's $1,000 because they do a lot of cooking equipment, but they're yeah. happy to see us cook in the car. Yeah, and we're uh, not talking like air fryer plugged into your 12-volt, are no. we? We're talking about in your engine bay or... On the dashboard so. in yeah, the sun, yeah, yeah, heat yeah. it up. I'm not sure. Most people drive in, it takes them 35, 40 minutes to come into, if they're coming into the city, which is, we're going to have to ask you to do that. We're at the top of Caxton Street. You've got to bring it here. Yeah, you've got to bring it here. We're going to come downstairs at, uh, I don't know, 8, 8, 30. We'll work yep. all that out and have a taste. <laughs> you so have you to a chance it? to taste be a poisonous as well. Marlo's going to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> there will yeah. be forms to fill in. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's all right. We'll uh, work that we out. would have invited Sammy from Thornside to partake, perhaps, but we we found out she drives a Prius. She cooked the scones <laughs> years ago when she had a proper carbon emitting car. Actually, on that point, this could be the way we get to the Glasgow result to net zero oh, emissions. If done, we yeah. all start cooking in the car, we're not wasting any, and that's what it's about, net zero. <laughs> About oh. combining your, your fuel fuel sources to get things done. So we're going to ask you one triple three five three. Give us a ring if you want to partake get in the challenge and get involved. But Jamie, tell them what they're up. Well, for. we've got a thousand dollars. We're going to split this up with the, the winner and some runners up. Yeah. Uh, you can check out Chaos's brand new store, Robinson Road, G Bung. They've got yeah. four wheel drive, camping, outdoors, adventure gear, and more. Amazing. Perfect for Christmas if you want to go away for the holidays. So thousand dollars to spend there. We'll be sharing that. But one triple three five three. If you can spare a couple of hours on Thursday morning. And drive in here, cooking something in your car. Call now. And we are the judges, Marto. We are the Matt Prestons of I'm going to make people eat the first mouthful. This is what (laughs) dictators do. They have (laughs) tasters, and then I'll have some after that. Tested on the minions. So 13353, if you want to get involved, it's for what? We're going to give away $500, $250, $250. $1,000 all up to spread the chaos. Too easy. Shelley from Collingwood Park. You're going to be our first contestant in our cooking yes. in your car. Hello, good morning, Shelley. Hi, how are you going? Good. Are, are, you, you? are you clear on what you're getting yourself into, are Shelley? You, are you clear? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I am. I'm, this, I'm up for the challenge. Is this a familiar concept to you, Shelley? Have you cooked in your car before like this? 
Um, I was just saying, I my husband did it, so I'm just going off oh, what I okay. saw. So he cooked scrambled eggs in the car with some oh. bacon and spring onion and hot dogs. Oh, oh my, my goodness. God. It's now, like a yeah. whole meal. I've heard about that one. You cook your hot dogs and you can warm them up and then next thing you know you arrive and you're ready to go. I need to see That's this. Right. Like, I mean, I'm so glad that we're doing this mm. because I need to see this, like, play out. <laughs> Are you I'm, making I've never, fun of Shelly and I? I'm not making fun of anyone. Okay. I'm just curious. Food, cooking she- in the car, curious. Shelly. Well, um, I'm hopeful that you like hot dogs. Yeah, well, <laughs> who doesn't? With scrambled eggs and bacon. <laughs> Bloody oath. Yeah. All of the above. Right, where are you coming from? Collingwood Park? Yeah, yeah, Collingwood Park, yeah. What, what, how long will it take you in from Collingwood Park? We don't mind if you drive around if you want to take off to get it right. How yeah. many hours uh, do you need, do you think? How long? Oh, uh, I reckon maybe about half an hour. Righto. Um, righto. Could you give it a go today, just a test drive, you know, do you think that's a good idea or just, just wing it? No, on just Thursday? wing it on Thursday. Because it's that's a lot. Oh, no, I reckon we might have a test run, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it all goes smoothly. Okay. I mean, there's five hundred dollars. I mean, we've got a thousand dollars that we're going to split between three people, Shelley. Five hundred dollars. Yep. It could the be winner. the difference between winning and being a runner-up and just getting two fifty. That's right. Yeah. Mm. So I've got to do a test run. Be all in the <laughs> practice makes perfect. All right, all right Shelley. Well, um, does everyone know where we're at? We've got to go to the traffic and the news. But, but Thursday, uh, we need. We, we've got to get another couple. We've only got yep. one contestant at this stage. Keep bringing um, one we'll triple work three, it out. There's five be three. A cook-off. Register right now, Marto Margo. Don't have breakfast on Thursday because this oh, is going to be delicious. Cannot wait. Um, it's a thousand dollars all up. Thanks to Chaos, we've got the brand new store Robinson Road in G Bung. They've four wheel drive camping, outdoors, and adventure gear, plus much more. That's what you could win. Mm. Or Incredible. the big breakfast, great car cook-off. There, there'll be wow, problems, and uh, we'll think of those as we go along, because what happens if they cook it and just pretend they did it in there? Well, I don't know ah. the rules, Marto, but oh, I'm okay with that. Make them up <laughs> as we go on. <laughs> Triple M. Triple M's Big Breakfast with Marto and Margo. We are talking yesterday. I just brought up, and I'm not sure. I think I saw him, I seen him on the screen while we're having our meeting after the show. We're having a quick chat. And I said, what, what did Elton John do? He, he accepted some title and then straight after him, Lord, I think he may have become a Lord or something. And then Lord Ian Botham. And I, oh, sorry, we were I'll, talking about the cricket. Oh, that's right. I said, can we get Ian Botham on the show? And I went, sorry, Sir Ian Botham. Then one of the boys outside. Said, no, I, Lord. He's Lord. Lord Ian Botham. All right. Well, you take the story on then because you went, <laughs> uh, I've got I've got a Lord in my family. <laughs> uh, big claim. <laughs> what I said was, is I think I have a Lord oh, or a think- Duke or an Earl or something. Logan Lord. <laughs> and I've gone, sorry? What are Not you talking Logan about? Law. At, at some stage, did you say that we're in the same branch of family as Diana, as in Princess Diana? Yeah, well, my lineage, if that's what you call yes. my heritage, my grandfather's side is yes. English and mm. there are Spencers mm. in my line of family and mm. that is the Diana, Kitty Spencer Princess Diana line. Like, I mean, Diana wasn't a mm. princess until she married Prince Charles, oh. but there's an earl or a duke or a lord or something somewhere. I've never really done my family tree back to that far. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How far back are we? Somebody <laughs> told me once upon a time <laughs> that there was a lord or a duke or something. How someone. far back are we? Like the Spencers of Tanamera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Spencers of Tanamera are hardly <laughs> the Spencers who married into the royal family. It was one of those things, uh, you know, as a kid. Someone, someone once said, like, I think it was my aunt yeah. or someone said, oh, oh, we've got a Duke in our family. Of course. There's and always so I one then of those. And went to really. school and said, oh, hey, I'm related uh, to the royal family. And everyone's like, you're oh, an idiot. Oh, God. <laughs> can, actually, Carla, can, can we? Because there's always that one auntie who goes to Lady Da herself and goes, oh, you know, we're, we're related. related. <laughs> <laughs> one triple three. Three, five, three. Who are you related to? Have you got that one person in your family that you claim? Oh, God. Do they claim you, Marto? No, they No, wouldn't. we used to always They'd say. Like, oh, no, he's not my son. If anyone wronged us, we'd go, you know Ray Martin's our uncle? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to ring him. My dad's a when lawyer. He, when he was on a current affair, we used to go, he's going to go, you, <laughs> Uncle Ray. All right. It's nice and easy. Who are you related to? Declan from Burp and Gary, have you ever chased up your family? Do you who are you we related to? Famous who are you family? related to? Yeah, um, we're originally from New Zealand and I knew that my mum's history is from the UK hey. and her great great uncle actually designed the spirit of ecstasy on the front of the Rolls Royce. What the, 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 the logo, the symbol on the front of the yeah, Rolls Royce. Yeah, yeah, so the actual with the wings. The, with the the wings. Statue, yeah, he designed that. And I found out how we got to New Zealand was he was he had royal blood and he had a family with the maid. <gasps> and he had to choose between 
his life in the UK mm. or the maid family, and he chose the maid family, and that's how we got to New Zealand. Good Lord. That's incredible. Um, how do you know this is true? Uh, the Sykes name in the UK oh. is pretty synonymous, yeah. and yeah. we had five generations of girls living at once in our family. My great-grandmother only died last year. She was 98. So there was verbal wow. history, yeah. Yeah, they, we were traced it all back, and we, um, my mum's done a family tree as well, so Incredible. she still has a UK passport. So. Do you drive a Rolls Royce out there at Burp and Gary Decker? <laughs> No. no, no, we we do have a have a strong history in in racing speedway stuff, but oh. no, I don't, I can't afford it. He does Rolls have Royce. one of those glued on the front of his Commodore, though. He's actually fl- <laughs> flogged it. Hey, <laughs> Declan, I'm going to throw hey, you a double you, pass mate. to the Australian PGA Championship, PGA and WPGA. Uh, they're on oh, the 13th fun. to the 16th of January at the Royal mm. Queensland Golf Club. Tickets at championship.pga.org.au. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> what about Paul from Logan's Texas? <laughs> Texas on the phone. What? Oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah. He said, my parents told me that I was an indirect relation to Tsar Nicholas II, the second of Russia. Uh-huh. I used Ancestry.com to trace my lineage. Turns out I'm related to a maid that worked in the summer vacation palace uh-huh. of the Russian royal family. <laughs> Thanks, Mum and Dad. Oh, God, we're all... Di- we're Aussies, all right? Just an indirect relation. Hey, we might have to bring this back in the morning. There's a lot of well, people John claiming from phone. Kenmore said Pink Floyd. Paul from Crestmead sent John Dawes, the ex Brisbane Bullet he's related to. Who cares Lindsay about John from Dawes. Noose is related what? to the Cabri family. That's now that's a relation I'd like to have. Oh, Lindsay. Oh, God. We all have right. to come no, back. We can't get to all of them. We'll, uh, more Hold on. Daz. Daz is related to the Kelly, Kelly gang. gang. Anyone? Oh, call and, back tomorrow. Any one triple three five three. Who are you in the morning? Before COVID-19, we used to worry whether our kids would make friends at school and learn new things. Now, we worry whether they'll be safe and how they will adapt to so many changes. No matter what your concerns are, CalHOPE can help with free emotional support resources. Call the American Indian Red Line today at 833-368-4090. The Big Breakfast with Marta and Marga. Triple M. Hey, Marta, it's not long now until the Olympics will be on our doorstep 2032. Uh, they're really starting to ramp up the talks about what we're going to be offering as a city mm. here in Brisbane. Uh, there were suggestions maybe we could dye uh, the Brisbane River, the brown snake, blue perhaps. <laughs> just- know, can I just make one quick point? I was driving home along Kingsmith Drive the other day. It looked bluish. Have they already started something we don't I'm not know sure. about? I said I, I think maybe they were going to be cleaning and Might dredging and doing the estuaries that lead yeah. into the Brisbane River to try and help. Uh, but there's a lot well, of mud on the bottom of that well, Brisbane sounds River. Good though, doesn't it? I just suggested maybe some food colouring. That blue Drop stuff. It in. It's so hard to get out of your fingers once you get on it. Mm. Stains. Maybe that might be uh, good for it. Uh, but there is going to be plenty of imp- infrastructure happening. We have got bridges happening. Obviously, uh, the casino will be built by then. Yep. They've got that Roma corridor Street. that's happening from Kangaroo Point over into the Gabba. There's going to be a... Green bridges. Green bridges. Mm. There's going to be a massive precinct. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned Green Marto. There's going to be another green thing here in Brisbane. Imagine taking a Sunday stroll along the river in Hamilton across the inner city bypass to South Bank and St Lucia all under the cover of a leafy green canopy. Well, this is the latest bold vision for Brisbane ahead of the 2032 Olympic Games. Just over there at Hamilton Ooh. near where you are. You'll be able yeah. to ride your bike through there amongst the, inner the city green. bypass. But, but you can go already go through Newstead and right around the corner to the river. What that's are they, what are they talking about? Don't worry about, about that, Marta, What are they this, doing? This is a new thing that's going to be happening. Oh. It's going to be beautiful. It's the, calling it the green canopy and the, the locals, they like it. Anything green is always good um, and I think encouraging people to like get outdoors and have like walkways where you can be along the river. It's always lovely. I mean, so, just looking out here mm. at the window, you can see lots of beautiful green trees. Mm. We've got Musgrave Park over there. Was she um, making a reference to drugs? There, <laughs> Anything green, you could hit, see her yeah. going yeah. home. Like a bucket bucket bong, couldn't yeah. You? Yeah. That That's girl. not the green we're talking what about. Talking but about? it's going to be a, a vast stretch what, of just trees. green canopy. What? The proposed 15 kilometre green lung would start in St Lucia, stretch through South Bank and around the CBD before finishing in Hamilton. See that Hamilton keeps coming up. That must be, is that where they are putting the athletes' village? Is that what what what's the canopy? I don't know. Well, I what, thought what? it was a canopy, but now it's the green lung. He said the green, the green lung. lung. What's a gr- green lung? 
Green lung. lung. That's not very appealing. What happened to the green canopy? Yeah. Leave it as the green canopy, not green this. Green lung. I think maybe the next 11 years they're going to have to try and come up with a new name because green, green lung. That's not very no, appealing. No, not nice Nobody at wants all. to go along the green, <laughs> green lung. lung. <laughs> it's Triple A and the Big Breakfast. Jesus. Oh, the great Glasgow conflab, whatever you want to call it, the, <laughs> the, the, the bid to <laughs> save the earth is over. As of yesterday, all the big timers went home a couple of weeks ago. Mm. And the uh, and the little, ec- what would you call it, an ecological jamboree. Oh, listen, I want to do that. God, they were there for two weeks. I think Greta Thunberg swam home to Sweden <laughs> yesterday, so she's all carbon neutral. Oh, God, what a load of nonsense is the it, whole thing was. Is it true that we rated pretty poorly in our efforts, Marto? In our efforts? Apparently Australia's, efforts? Australia's we're like oh, ranked last. According to some of <laughs> Oh, Jesus. We, we rank first some places, last others. It depends who you talk to, Margot. Yeah. It really dep- Do you talk to Boris Johnson? Because he says this. Glasgow has sounded the death knell for coal power. Or you speak to people on the ground who have got an election to win next year, like Matt Canavan. It's a big green light for us to build more coal mines, supply the world more coal. So he takes it. People read documents and go, that means this, that means that. What does, it, what does it mean, Boris? Marking the beginning of the end for coal power. OK, what do the nationals here in Australia think? There's never been stronger demand for our coal. That's so true. <laughs> it is true. Because otherwise, do you want to live with... And as there's only one Barnaby Joyce, isn't there? And as he put it yesterday, this is the bottom line. If people want to be poor, if that's the goal, you want to be poor, you don't like your standard of living, then stop exporting the stuff that makes you the dollars and you can be poor. Everyone understand what's going on now? Right across it. Thanks, Back to work. Marto. Triple M's Big Breakfast with Marto and Margo. Marto, there has been a couple of houses sell uh, just around us where we live in Cornubia, and I'm yeah. definitely considering considering putting our house on the market. It would be silly not to. You've I mean, to, are we going to see these prices else, again? For, I live in the caravan. Have you oh. got a backyard I can... No, I haven't got a backyard. You've got some camping <laughs> gear. I've got, yeah. got some camping gear. I can <laughs> camp in caravan until I find another place. And just on that note, if anyone needs some camping gear that's only been used <laughs> once, Margot has some with just a little bit of sand on it. But Brand new with tags. Let's get back to what we are talking about because I, I tell you what, because it's been going up and up and up and nothing can go up forever. And I see yesterday there's a survey, Australia's peak finance and mortgage broker. So people who deal with this stuff every day, they're the Australia, they're finance brokers are Association of Australia, did a survey and they uh, they are predicting looming disaster as soon as interest rates rise. And I thought, listen, we might as well go to the bloke who commissioned the survey. Well, he's the managing director of the FBAA. Peter White, hello and welcome to The Big Breakfast. Hey, Margo. Uh, Marty, how's Margo? How you going? Yeah, good, mate. Now, you're talking, you're saying in this article I'm reading, and, and I don't want to predict disaster, but it's time people stop sleepwalking into the future and going, oh, this will happen forever. Can you tell us what it showed? Yeah, sure, Marto. I mean, look, the, the bottom line to this is we commissioned an independent group just to go out to the marketplace, not our members or our uh, or borrowers that we know, just to find out where the pain point was if interest rates rise, where does it start to fracture? And uh, listen, I've, I've been in this game 43 years. I know I don't look it, but uh, I've been in here for a while. And uh, I was surprised at how close it was when things start to get dark for people. And basically what it said, if your repayments go up by $300 a month, 57% of the borrowing population can't afford it. That means they're going to financial hardship. And that's roughly that's a 1% increase in home loan rates. It is. It's really scary. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this a while. And... Uh, I would not. I was very surprised that uh, it was this close because the predictions are next year. There's not going to be one. There's going to be multiple interest rate rises. So does that apply so to people with current home loans or who are looking to uh, maybe sell and repurchase on their new home loans? Or is this across? Margo, it, yeah, across both? Margo, it's actually yeah. It's, it's principally looking at people who already have a mortgage mm. and people who are paying rent. So if you go for a loan today, there's certain. Uh, criterias in the credit assessment that apply. It sort of says you should be okay, but those who've already got a mortgage, mm-hmm. um, they you know got that some time ago. And if interest rates rise now, we, we all live to our own economies. We, we spend what we earn, basically. Um, or we might have bought a car or done some renos, whatever it may be since we first got our loan. But if it goes up by 300 months, Half of, well, mm. almost 60% of the people are saying we can't afford, we can't afford it. it. Okay, and that's but, really but, scary. But Pete, you'd also analyse this. The RBA has 
have they give it, still given a guarantee that they're not going to put the interest rates up until the end of next year or that might change? Well, Marto, that's, that's the problem, right? Because um, RBA is saying they're going to hold things low as, as long as possible. Yeah, but like, there's a what does huge that mean? but. Well, there's a huge but to that. You've seen the banks are already lifting their fixed interest rates, right? That is a telltale sign. They are, they are planning on interest rates going up. That's why they do that. And they've got these really cheap variable rates, which is like a, a little bait to say, yeah, come here and play with me because my rates are cheap, on the expectation they're going to jack it up through the roof as it goes forward. Now, the the reality at the end of the day is the, uh, the, the banks have stepped out of line with any movement from the RBA okay. or even the international markets where they get some of their funding. But they can uh, see all, inflation, all correct, P- Peter? They can see international inflation's gone up and everybody yep. in our society knows how much everything's costing more, whether it's petrol, yep. food, fruit, vegetables, Living everything, expenses, meat. Exactly. Everything's going up. That's inflation, but the, yep. uh, the Reserve Bank's not acknowledging it, but the banks are going, listen, we're ahead of the curve here. So it's going to happen, isn't it? Oh, look, that, that's right. The whole reality is it's going to happen. That's why we're talking about it now. Um, Well, now because we've just got the research, but also the fact if you're going to do something about this, you need to do it now or very soon because once this animal starts to roll, it's going to be really hard to catch it. So you're going to get left behind and potentially become a mortgage prisoner to your bank where you won't even be able to refinance because the interest rates are jumping quickly. We have a, a what they call a floor rate, which is like a margin on top of your current interest rate that they use for serviceability. So it's higher than what you're paying. What, what, what do you call it, Peter, when your your house is actually worth less than what you owe the bank? Is that ne- <laughs> negative equity? What do you call it? <laughs> yeah, I call it screwed. But uh, yeah, yeah right. negative, trouble. Negative that's what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly right. Especially if you um, you have know, poor first home buyers. You know, you borrow as much as you can to get in your first home. Yeah. With you're talking before about property prices that are going up. I've seen them up over thirty percent in some areas around uh, southeast Queensland. Um, you know, that will come down a bit. It won't go down to what it was, but it will sort of slightly pull back a bit from its peak. And when you get to that point, depending on when you borrow, you could be in this negative equity position whereby you owe more money than what your house is worth. And that's a real problem because a bank can call your mortgage up at any time. Peter, mm. amazing people. It's a great warning because it, it is going to happen and people need to be careful. I'm not saying sell your house now, but everyone, mm. keep reassessing yeah. what Reduce you got. Reduce your overheads for sure. Exactly. Thanks, Peter. And Marto, Mark, yeah, best thing is speak to your mortgage broker because they're the ones that are under a legal duty to put your interest ahead of theirs and uh, they're the people to talk to because your banks can only tell you what they've got. And at the moment, that's where the problems are. Thanks, Pete. Peter White, Finance Brokers Association of Australia's Managing Director. <laughs> Anything you missed from today's Big Breakfast is in the Catch-Up Podcast on the Listener app, thanks to Chemist Warehouse. Pick up a fragrance for a loved one this Christmas from Chemist Warehouse, the real house of fragrance. Before COVID-19, we used to worry whether our kids would make friends at school and learn new things. Now, we worry whether they'll be safe and how they will adapt to so many changes. No matter what your concerns are, CalHOPE can help with free emotional support resources. Call the American Indian Red Line today at 833-368-4090. 